so today we are going to discuss newton laws of motions so before discussing newton laws of motion i have a question from the previous lecture that was velocity and acceleration in different coordinate system so let us discuss that one problem then we will proceed to newton's laws of motion so this is your the problem that is a particle is moving along a straight line x is equal to a with constant velocity v not j cap if at time t is equal to 0 second particle is at a comma 0 find vr at time t at any time t find the radial velocity i am not going to solve this problem you are supposed to solve it by own so that you might check whether you are getting the concepts or not so let's move on the newton's laws of motion the answer will be of this problem is in description box you can check your answer from there so as the name suggests that these are the laws of motion so if a particle if you know what what are that quantities of a particle if you know then you can tell the future of that particle where the particle will be at that time what will be the acceleration what will be the velocity how the particle will evolve with time so there are some basic laws of motion of the dynamics of the particle so that was given by newton there are basically three laws of motion so we will start from the newton's second law newton's second law which says that if p is a momentum of a system if p is a momentum of a system and there is any force f force is a vector quantity i better it is right to f momentum is a vector quantity better it is right p vector if p is a momentum of the system and any f vector is a net force on the system then the newton's second law says that the rate of change of momentum with time that is dp by dt is equal to f vector so the newton second law says that if there is a net force on the system then the rate of change of momentum is that force so basically this equation is valid for when mass is equal to constant or mass is equal to variable if the mass is variable or constant this equation is true for both the cases whether the mass is variable or the mass is constant so from here we we know that the momentum of the particle is given by mass times velocity so from the second law we can conclude that d by dt of mv vector is equal to net force if mass is constant then we can take it out from the integration that this equation implies m dv by dt is equal to net force this implies that force is equal to mass into acceleration this equation is true only when mass is equal to constant okay if mass is variable then their extra term will be there that is plus v vector dm by dt how the mass is changing with respect to time okay so if mass is equal to constant then force is given by f is equal to ma vector so we can write in a cartesian components form f vector f the x component of force is equal to max the y component of force is given by may the z component of force is given by m a z and these a x a y a z are in cartesian coordinates cartesian coordinate system so if you wish to write these forces in polar coordinate system then it will be the in plane polar coordinates in plane polar coordinates this force is written as f radial force is given by mass into radial acceleration and the tangential or transverse acceleration so not tangential it transverse force is given by m into 
transverse acceleration m into a theta so this was all about the second law that rate of change of momentum is force that is valid for when mass is equal to constant and or mass is equal to variable for constant mass force may be written as mass into acceleration and we have seen the various components of uh, components of force in cartesian coordinate system and plane polar coordinate system this concept will more clear when we will solving the problems on these concepts so let now let us introduce the newton's third law of motion newton's third law of motion states so let me write here newton's third law of motion so if see these forces these all laws are valid in an inertial frame these all laws that newton gave is valid only in inertial frames they are not valid in non inertial frame like accelerating frame or rotating frame of reference so newton's third law says to every action to every action there is an equal and opposite reaction there is an equal and opposite reaction what does it mean that if i have a particle let us called as one and there is an another particle let us call it two and there is a force this force is written as f12 that is force on particle 1 due to 2 that is force on particle 1 due to 2 newton's third law says if there is a force on one particle due to an another particle there there must be an another force that is force on particle 2 due to 1 this is force on particle 1 due to 2 so newton law says that force on first particle due to 2 is equal to force and second particle and there is an equal and opposite reaction so there must be a negative sign the so force on particle 1 due to 2 is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction where the force is on 2 due to 1 okay that was all about the newton's third law of motion what does it state so in when we were dealing the problems so there will be more uh, when we were dealing the problems then these concepts will be more clear to you all one more thing i would like to discuss here that these forces may or may not be in the radial direction like if there is a particle let us call it one and there is an another particle let us call as two and this is the radial direction this is the radial direction if somehow the force is like this that this is f12 this way then the newton's third law says that there must be a force that is f21 that may be the internal forces so from here we can conclude that net force is not like the net force is zero but the net torque is not zero so internal force may generate torque these are not problems basically these are some examples on newton's third law of motion some examples of third law of motion so let us suppose the first example that there is a smooth surface there is a smooth surface and there is a block of mass m capital m and there is another block of small mass small m let us denote by m1 and m2 for your better convenience and if a force f is applied on it and this surface is rough then what will be the forces on this particle acting so we are discussing third law of motion so generally we will discussing about the uh, action and reaction forces so from here you can see that i am drawing the two blocks separately so if this was the m2 sorry uh, let me write here this was the rough see there is a force 
there is a block of mass m2 and a force f is applied on it okay and there is an another block of mass m1 on surface on the surface of block m2 since the surfaces are rough then there will be some frictional forces at the contact surface then the direction of the frictional forces will be given at that this block will move forward by this frictional force fr so if block m1 has a frictional force in the uh, in the forward direction then due to the newton's third law of motion there must be an frictional force in the opposite direction this is fr so the, on the block m2 there are two forces f is acting in this way and fr is acting on this way on the block m1 there is only one force fr that is frictional force that is acting on the forward direction okay so that was the force on particle m m1 that was the force on particle m2 let's have an another example where the particle where the force is applied on the mass m1 mass m1 smaller block so the, all the conditions are same this is block m2 this is block m1 and now the force is applied on f and this surface is again rough so now what will happen again constructing these two blocks at separately m2 and m1 so now on m1 there is a force in f in the forward direction and if the block m1 moves in the forward direction then there is a frictional force fr in the opposite direction in the con that is a frictional force at the contact surface then according to newton's third law of motion there must be a frictional force in the forward direction at the upper surface of the block m2 so at block m1 there are two forces f acting on this way and fr is acting on this way and on block m2 the, on, there is only frictional force fr is acting so you can see that this problem was all about the frictional forces at the contact surfaces now let us discuss one problem and this problem was basically asked not asked in jam but these types of problems were asked in jam to find the normal reaction or the total reading of the weight machine so suppose the, uh, let me construct a problem that there is a weighting machine this problem you have heard uh, this problem is also this types of problems is also given in hc verma book so there is a weighing machine and there is one person standing on it my drawing is very bad and <clears throat> there is some string or he is pu pulling that string and the person is pulling some string with downwards it is pulling something downward so the question is basically asked what is the reading of the weight machine what question is what is reading of weighing machine so this types of problem can be answered there is a general approach for this types of problems is the general solution for these types of problem is that the reading of the weighing machine is nothing but what is the normal reaction so if the weighing has a normal reaction n so that will be the reading of the weighting machine so now we have to calculate the normal reaction so let us draw the this diagram again suppose the this is a weighing machine and my drawing is too bad so don't suppose there is a person of mass m and this is his hand and it is pulling something down by a force f so if he pulls something down by force f his force will experience a force f on upward direction okay so the this mass mg due to gravitation and suppose this is the normal force m so the person is at at rest this person is at rest it means that acceleration of the person is zero this implies that if acceleration is zero then net force is equal to zero 
So net force is equal to zero means N plus F must be equal to mg. So the net upward force and the net downward force should equal to zero. So from here the normal force is equal to mg minus F. So the normal force is mg minus F. So this is the reading of weighing machine, reading of machine. So these types of problems in, in which you are uh, supposed to find out the reading of the weighing machine that is nothing but the normal reaction on the weighing machine. If there is a problem on a spring balance, okay, then the reading is the tension in the spring. So that was, this was a problem. This was not, not this problem was asked in jam, but these types of problem where the reading was to be calculated. So in every problem of this type where the person is pulling something and the net and there is a weighing machine. So what will be the weighing machine? So that will be the nothing but the normal weight. Suppose there might be problem in a lift and there is a, you are in a lift and you are on a weighing machine and the lift is accelerating upward or downward. Then you have to find the uh, reading. What is the reading of that uh, weighing machine in the lift? If the lift is accelerating with some acceleration A not upward or downward, then what you have to calculate is just the normal force the normal reaction on the weighing machine that will be the answer so let us discuss one more example on newton's third law so this is your next example in this example we have a wedged block system we call it as wedge blocked system suppose uh, there is a wedge shape there is a wedge and it is on, on a smooth surface. So this surface is basically smooth. So let me draw it here. Okay, so this surface is smooth and there is one block on this surface that is let's say it has a small mass M and it has a small mass capital. It has a capital mass. Now let us draw the forces on these masses. Okay, so there will be a gravitation force on this small mass it is mg and let us suppose that this angle is theta given so there will be two components of this mg mass that uh, this all this angle will also be mg so this will your mg cos theta and this component is your mg sin theta so these are the and there will be a normal force on this block on this block due to this block so this is your normal force so normal reaction on which has a leftward component see how i claim it this is small block has a normal component in the upward direction so its reaction will be on the this wedge shaped film so there will be a normal force n which is equal in magnitude just opposite in direction and it is acting on this wedge shape so there will be two components of this n also let us call this as n x and there will be a this component that is n y these are not vector don't confuse that these are uh, this n y is greater than n i have just drawn it so that it might come from like it might be clear to you so there is one component n y in the n x direction so i will call it as that leftward component leftward component so due to this nx component, the block of mass m will move in left direction. So this was the dynamics of the like this wedge shaped body. So if we have a suppose consider there is a consideration that this surface is smooth and there is no hinged or anything like that. So in a wedge block system, if a block suppose uh, a small block is moving on a wedge then due to the normal force there is a component of normal force against the opposite direction so that the capital so that the wedge block system will move in the leftward direction okay so that was all about the newton's law now you have an uh, an idea about how the newton's action and reaction law follows now let us discuss one more example on newton's third law so this example is suppose you have a system like this 
if a body is like this now this picture you might have seen in several books i have taken from one of the book and this uh, it is on a surface and this surface is smooth okay so this is the let us uh, suppose that the mass of this block is capital m and here it is a uh, another block of small mass m and let us suppose that the position is at a and its initial velocity at this point is zero and the question is what is dynamics of capital m means what is the dynamics of this block this block so let us discuss the dynamic of motion of this block a so at an instant of time when it is released from this point a it comes to the point b so what is happening there is a normal force in this direction n on this block small m mass block m and there will be a reaction force on this capital block m in just in opposite direction okay so this is i have been writing n r let us just by not that reaction force then it has a two component that is n y and one of this is n x so this is same as just from the previous example so see here it is a n y n x component which will what what this n x will do n x will try to move the block m in the leftward direction okay left direction let us consider the further dynamics of the same particle so now let us suppose now the particle has crossed this the half the way and now it is at position c then again there will be a normal force along this direction and there will be a reaction force in the opposite direction to the capital to the block of capital mass m and here again there will be two components it is let's say n dash y just to separate the n y n y and this is n x dash now what the n x dash will do it will move the block of capital m in the rightward direction rightward direction see if the block of mass m was here at position a then the capital mass then the block of capital mass m was moving in the leftward direction and when it when it when it uh, when it was at a uh, point c then it was moving in the rightward direction again if the block will reach here then the initial condition like here at u is equal to 0 it was it at rest so when the block was b at point d again the due to energy conservation so the block m and the small block n will be at momentarily rest so what the block cap the dynamics of the capital block m is going like at suppose first it is like going in this direction then again it will move in the backward direction so it is an oscillation so the dynamics of the block m is oscillation so the block m will oscillate left and right so uh, this was just a consequence of the previous example in the previous example we have seen that the particle the small block of m was on a wedge shape when the block will move in the on the wedge then the wedge will go in the backward direction in the same way here the dynamics of the part, small mass particle m is moving in a uh, like a circular thing so that the capital mass m that that it is not a block let's say is a the, the body that is oscillating left and right so when the block m goes rightward so the block capital mass m will go leftward so the momentum is also conserved in this direction in this way uh, here i am making two statement that statement for number 1 in all problems of mechanics what we will see in future in all problems of mechanics Newton's third law Newton's third law is applicable and here i am making second uh, statement that in other interactions in other interactions 
Newton's third law. Newton's third law may not be applicable. May not be applicable. So here we have seen the examples where the Newton's laws was applicable, the, especially the third one we were discussing about. So in the all problems of mechanics, you will encounter that third law is applicable everywhere. But in some of the interactions, you will uh, you will come across that the Newton's third law is not valid. So let us have one one example where the Newton's third law is not applicable. Okay. So now we are going to discuss one interaction where the Newton's third law is not valid. And that is that magnetic interaction magnetic interactions between moving charges between moving charges do not obey Newton's third law. See, it do not obey Newton's third law. Newton magnetic interactions between moving two, when the two charges move, then, they, uh, then the Newton's third law is not valid there. Let us see how. So first we will consider the axis, the x and y axis so that it is clear to have the directions. So suppose this is x axis and this is y axis and it is, here it is z axis. This symbol, whichever in future conference we will use, this is we will be considering as upward direction and if you see something like this then it will be used as downward direction okay so suppose there are two charges moving along the axis so consider there is a charge q1 and it is moving across y direction let's say its velocity is vy and there is an another charge on x axis and it is its charge is q2 and is moving across v x axis so you know that force the magnetic force on a charged particle is given by q that is v cross v okay so there is a charge q1 it is moving in this direction okay that is vy so it can be considered at a charge that is moving across this line. So the moving charge is equivalent to a uh, like a wire that has that have some current. So if a wire is in current in this direction I, so then the field will be generated like this. And here is a magnetic field in downward direction. So I know someone have a difficulty in the magnetic fields like if you have not studied. So I just am giving you a hint. So if there is a current in this direction, then the magnetic field in this side is upward and this side is downward like the magnetic field came across like this so it is generating from the left side and is going into the paper right side okay so this moving charge will consider as a it may be considered as a wire in which the current is flowing because it is going in a in y direction so the magnetic field, let us consider that these points are A and B. So it is, it will be more easy to call them. So due to this charge Q1, the magnetic field at point B is in downward direction. Okay, so uh, let me call that magnetic field as B1. Magnetic field due to charge 1 at point B. In the same, in the same way, we can conclude that the that the charge q2 is moving along the x direction so it will be have a magnetic field in the upward direction here so let me call this magnetic field as b2 it is magnetic field at, on magnetic field at point a due to charge b2 so this was the magnetic interaction so if we consider the force then force is q v cross b so let us consider the force on charge F that the force on charge 2 due to the magnetic field of 1 that is Q2 and V V vector that is magnetic uh, let us let us suppose only the direction so 
the charge q has a direction in i cap so it is velocity vx i cap cross magnetic field is b1 that is and the direction of magnetic field is in downward direction due to the magnetic field due to one on this charge 2 is in downward direction so it is minus of j cap so this is minus j cap so overall the direction of the force on 2 due to 1 some constant that is q2 v2 some constant that is given by q2 vx b1 and basically i cross minus j uh, i cross sorry this is not j cap this direction is k cap we have considered so this is minus k cap so this will be my mistake this is minus k cap this will be minus k cap so i cross k cap is minus j cap and there will be a so i cross minus k is j cap so this will be in j cap direction okay so the force on charge 2 q2 is in j cap direction so let us calculate the force on charge 1 due to this magnetic field of 2. This is charge multiplied by the velocity cross B vector. So it is Q1, the velocity is Vy J cap cross that the magnetic field B. Here the magnetic field is some constant, uh, the direction is in j k cap direction so it is plus k cap so j cap cross k cap so this is b2 so it is q1 v y b2 so and direction is j cross k and j cross k is i cap see in this interaction that is the magnetic interaction here we have concluded that the force on 2 due to the magnetic field of first is in j cap direction and force on 1 due to the magnetic field of 2 is in i cap direction. So we just have concluded the directions of that forces. So the force on q2, force on 2 is in this direction. This is f to 1 vector and force here it is f to 1 vector. This is i cap and this is j cap. See in magnetic interactions here it is clear that the force on 2 is not in the opposing direction. One is in I cap direction and one it is J cap direction. So in this type of interaction like the magnetic interaction of moving charges, this does not follow the Newton's third law. So I, as I have mentioned earlier that in mechanics third law is applicable everywhere. In these types of interaction it may or may not be like in this case. Uh, the, where the magnetic interaction was seen between the moving charges. So here you have concluded that the Newton's third law is not valid here. So this was all about the Newton's third law. Now we, we should move around problems based on Newton's laws. So now we will learn the problems based on Newton's law. Here I am again making some of the statements. So let me write it here. First one is all problems of mechanics can be solved using Newton's laws. See, this statement I am making that all problems of mechanics can be solved by using Newton's law. This does not mean that there is no other method where the Newton's the problems of mechanics cannot be solved. There are methods like uh, in the later quote in the later videos you will come across uh, that one is energy conservation laws. This that is most simple ways. Look to many of the, when you face the problems difficult. Uh, from Newton's laws of motion, it will be of two or three lines or four or five lines using from energy conservation. So every problem of mechanics can be solved using Newton's law, but there are some other methods in which you can solve the problems very easily. So I'm not saying that there are not such other methods. There are methods, but problems can be solved by Newton's law. Okay. Like in the classical mechanics approach, if you will see Lagrangian and Hamiltonian of the system, that, that is all about the 
energy conservation and you will like uh, uh, writing the lagrangian you have just t minus v that is kinetic energy minus potential energy and from there you can conclude the equations of motions so here we will discussing about the newton's laws of motion so if the problem is related to force and speed or distance acceleration etc then you can use newton's third law like if the problem is given to calculate the force speed distance acceleration and everything so you can use newton's third law there very easily so i am concluding the what i have told you earlier that if mass is equal to constant then you can use f is equal to mass into acceleration that is a newton second law and if mass is equal to variable then you use f is equal to d sorry dp by dt okay that is a newton second law that rate of change of momentum is the total force on the system so this is going we are going to use this only this two concepts in newton's laws of motion that if mass is constant then force is equal to mass into acceleration if mass is variable then you will use this like it is written as d by dt and m times velocity if mass is constant then we can took it out from the integration if it is not then we have to write it as m dv by dt plus v vector dm by dt this vector came across dm by dt if mass is equal to constant then dm by dt is equal to zero so that is how the mass is changing with time so let us conclude from here the equations of motion so if i write f is equal to mass time acceleration and if a is equal to constant then we have some equation of motions if a is equal to only constant then we can write this like first v is equal to u plus at second equation of motion is s is equal to ut plus half at square and third one is v dot v is equal to u dot u plus 2 a dot s so these are the equations of motion this can be only applicable when acceleration is constant okay now what to do like in jam whenever you came across the problems there will be that there can be a situation when acceleration is a function of time acceleration is a function of position then what to do and if acceleration is a variable part if it is a variable then how to solve a problem then we will use the calculus like uh, derivative and uh, integration that acceleration is equal to dv by dt it is true for the variable and it is true for the constant acceleration so if a problem is related to matlab acceleration is a function of time then you will, we will use a is equal to dv by dt what happens when acceleration depends upon the position see dv by dt can be written as dv by dx into dx by dt and your this dx by dt is nothing but v dv by dx so it is similar to v dv by dx so if the acceleration is a function of position then we will use a is equal to v dv by dt and if acceleration is a function of time then we will use a is equal to dv by dt so if we have given the acceleration as a function of position then we will substitute this a as dv by dt and just do the integration over the, the position then we will have the velocity and further further integration will give you the position so if you know the variable acceleration in terms of position or in terms of time then after integrating it you can get the velocity and position at some instant of times okay so that was all all about how to use the newton's laws of motion if newton's laws just say that rate of change of momentum is 
the force. If mass is constant, then we can write F is equal to m a only. And if acceleration is also constant, then these equation of motions can simply be used. And if acceleration is itself a variable, then we will use the differential uh, calculus like dv x integration and differentiation. Now let us discuss one simple example on these laws. So the question is like there is a stone. It is thrown upward. And it is acted upon by gravity. And there is a drag force also. So drag force always acts, the drag force acts opposite to the direction of the velocity. So if I have a block of mass m and it is th thrown upward direction, it has an upward velocity. Let me draw only one diagram. This is upward. It is it has a velocity v, a, a stone that is thrown upward direction. So and it has a it is under gravity, so there must be a force in the up in the in the downward direction that is mg and there is a drag force drag force x in the opposite direction of the block of the velocity like if the velocity is an upward direction then the drag force is fd drag force must maybe the air resistance if the block is going upward then the air resistance is resisting in the downward direction if it is an example it may be some other thing that is opposite to the direction of the velocity and the block is moving upward so it has an acceleration in the upward direction okay so from here we can write the newton's law so from newton's law write just equation of motion from we will start from simply writing the equation of motion solving is another one so the net force on the block is given by mass times acceleration that is the newton's third law now let us see the what is the net force and we are causing we are calling this direction as positive direction the upward direction is positive so this acceleration is positive direction and the force one of the force is minus mg that is in downward direction and there is an another force fd it is also in the negative direction of the motion so from here the acceleration can be written as minus mg minus fd my and fd is just the drag force just the symbol of the drag force okay so the acceleration is mg minus mg minus fd by m so if the drag force is constant then the acceleration is constant if drag force is a function of the velocity then it is not a constant so if the problem having the symbols like up and down so we can we can say that the gravity is included sometimes it is not written in a question that uh, we have to consider the gravity or not but in question something it is like in a way that up and down words are used that it is going upward it is going downward okay so you you shall know from this that gravity is acting upon it okay so let us discuss one problem and we will solve the velocity term in where the acceleration is not constant and the, the problem so the problem is like this this is one problem and we are going to solve it here. There is a block of mass m and a force f is applied on it at t is equal to 0. At t is equal to 0, the initial velocity of the block is 0 and it has a mass m and a force f is applied on it. Suppose there is a resistive force, drag force is also the resistive force, resistive force that is equal to minus b of b v is the instantaneous velocity of that particle so we can write it as fr the drag force is bv from here we can conclude f is equal to bv this negative sign just represents that the force is opposing the velocity okay so the drag force the magnitude of the drag force is b times the velocity the instantaneous velocity so what we have to find is find the velocity of the particle at t is equal to some time t what is the velocity so the question is to find velocity at time t at given instant of time so this is the problem a problem is there is a mass of mass m at t is equal to 0 its initial velocity is 0 
a constant force F is applied on it and there is a resistive force its magnitude is B times its instantaneous velocity find the velocity of the particle at time t at any time t okay it is moving in some this direction so let us have the solution of this problem first you should try by it on your own and if you don't get the solution or to check the solution you can have you just see the solution so first of all you have to draw the free body diagram as you have done in your class 12th problems to draw the free body diagram at any instant of time t suppose this is a point mass well, in free body diagram we consider the blocks as a point mass there is a force in this direction that is a constant force f suppose at time t is equal to t its velocity is v which we have to find out okay at this velocity there is a drag force f r its magnitude is b times v so now we have the system free body diagram two forces are acting that is constant force f this is one of the constant force it is given in the problem that force is equal to constant and there is a drag force which is acting on the opposite direction that its magnitude is f sorry b into v drag force f r and i am calling this direction as a positive direction so let us write newton's law so from newton's law we can write the net force m a is equal to f minus b v okay so this is the total force on the system so from here we will get that acceleration is equal to f minus bv by m see this velocity is changing at t is equal to 0 it was u at t is equal to t it is something v which we have to find out so here the v is a variable so if velocity is a variable then this whole function f minus bv by m f is a constant v is constant mass is constant but the velocity is varying this implies that this acceleration is a variable one here acceleration is not a constant if acceleration was constant then we can simply use the newtons that equation of motions here the velocity is variable implies that the acceleration is variable so what we have to do a is equal to dv by dt as i have told it earlier and you know it already but here see the acceleration is a function of velocity so we can write it as a dv by dx it depends upon the problem that whether you have to find acceleration in terms of position or you have to find the acceleration in terms of time so look acceleration okay sorry whether it depends upon the problem whether you are finding the excel the velocity or the velocity or position in terms of the time or the position here i am supposed to find the velocity as a function of time okay so i will be using this that a is equal to dv by dt okay so here a is equal to f minus bv by m so implies that dv by dt is equal to f minus bv by m so you can see that this is a first order differential equation differential equation and we are going and now we are supposed to solve this first order differential equation and then from after integrating it we will have the solution so we are going to solve it db by dt is equal to f minus bv by m so db let me write it this way this is implies that 1 by f minus bv dv is equal to 1 by m dt from here you can substitute it like f let us suppose f minus vv is something called uh, a b c d or some, let us call it, um, z this implies that minus b dv is equal to dz this implies that dv is equal to minus 1 by b dz so let us have the substitution so it will be become 1 by z minus 1 by b dz is equal to 1 by m dt 
this is equal to minus 1 by m integration over 1 by z dz is equal to integration 1 by m dt integrating the both sides remember after integration you have to put the limits okay so we will integrate it minus 1 by b this will be ln z and let us put the value of z here only so we will put f minus bv so the limit will be on the that velocity part and this is 1 by m this is t so let us put the limit at t is equal to 0 the velocity was u is equal to 0 at t is equal to t the velocity is v so just substitute it so this will be ln f minus bv uh, it will be f that just do the calculation it will come out and this is minus bt by m minus 0 so finally you have got this equation that it will be like this so the equation is the solution so the solution is that uh, f minus bv by f is equal to e raised to power minus bt by m so this is 1 minus bv by f is equal to e raised to power minus bt by m so from here you will see that f is equal v is equal to f by b 1 minus e raised to power minus bt by m you just have solved this rearrange term and find the value of v now you have find the velocity v as a function of time this is minus m okay so now we have find the velocity as a function of t here it is a part of discussion so let us discuss the solution so we have find the solution as v is equal to f by b 1 minus e raised to power minus bt by m so this is your solution final solution as a velocity as a function of time so at t is equal to 0 what is v at t is equal to 0 e raised to power minus 0 is equal to 1 then 1 minus 1 and everything is goes so your velocity is equal to 0 it was it is satisfying our the initial condition see what happens at t is equal to infinity at t is equal to infinity this exponential part will become e raised to power minus infinity this e raised to power minus infinity goes to 0 then the velocity is f by b see f was constant force given in the problem and the drag force was some constant time velocity this is also a constant so at when the time is going very large at infinite time like infinite in physics it means to be large if time goes to infinity then the velocity goes f by b that is a constant part so let us draw this velocity versus time so if it is velocity as a function of time and here it is a time scale given at t is equal to 0 the velocity of the particle is given by 0 and it will it will increase with time as time increases this exponential part goes decreasing and the velocity will increase so as time increases the velocity will increase and after the time it will become a constant so at t is equal to suppose this is going to be infinity this time this velocity here it is constant so this is a graph of velocity versus I might have missed that the axis is my is not too good. Just you just do it and draw it by there is a one more in if you are using the smartphone then there is a application. Uh, let me check my phone. There is an application named Desmos D E S M O S. I am using this app very much and it is very good for me the graphical analysis of the functions. So. Uh, I suggest you to have that application there might be another application but I am using that you just plot this v is equal to f by b and you will find that this type of graph so it will be better for, look, for a physicist or for a person who is learning physics to have the graphical analysis is very much important so here we have concluded when the time goes to infinity that the velocity is constant and this velocity this constant velocity is called as terminal velocity 
it might be asked find the terminal velocity of this problem suppose the same problem is given everything is same what i have asked that the velocity as a function of time it might be asked in a problem find the terminal velocity so when there is a terminal velocity you have to find at a con the terminal velocity is a constant velocity and it is also defined as the velocity where the net force is zero so in a problem if there is a something net force is given so this force can directly be uh, this if terminal velocity is asked it, it can directly be can be solved see in a free body diagram you have seen that there is a mass this is a mass m and there is a force f applied on it and there is a drag force that is given by fr that is b times b i am defining that terminal velocity is that velocity where the net force is zero so if the net force is zero then f must be equal to bv then v is equal to f by b which is coming here okay so from here you can see the terminal velocity is f by b it will goes look, at infinite time it will happen so if in cons in in this question if the terminal velocity is asked you can directly solve being by putting the net force is equal to zero because terminal velocity is defined where the net force is zero if the net force is zero then the velocity is constant you have already know uh, know this from the newton's laws of motion that if acceleration is constant or like the uh, net force is zero so there is no acceleration if no acceleration then well the velocity is constant that constant velocity where the net force is zero is called the terminal velocity so here i wish to introduce the concept of terminal velocity and i and i have introduced something so in the next lecture we will be uh, dealing with more problems thank you and all the best and solve more problems on this good luck